Hello there, I'm Jeanette Lane, a craft designer here at Craft Stash, and today I wanted to show you the latest Apple Blossom launch, which is the Drinks Trolley Collection. But before I jump into my card tutorial, I just wanted to quickly go through each of these amazing products, and I know that you're gonna be so inspired and ideas are gonna fly into your head. And so in this collection, we have a range of gorgeous embossing folders, and again, they're all like drinks themed, so that's really cute. And along with the embossing folders. We also have some stamps. And honestly, this collection is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's perfect for all occasion cards as well as masculine makes. And the sentiments are all drink related. So we have things like pop, fizz, enjoy, and so on. And along with the embossing folders and the stamp sets, we also have some gorgeous little dies that I think you're gonna fall in love with. They are so great to work with, and I'm really excited to get to the tutorial, so let's jump right into that. I'm gonna be sharing how to make this kinetic champagne bottle card, and it's really fun and easy to make. And you can use any of the other dyes in the collection to make this. So you can use the beer bottle die and the glass that comes in that set if you wanna make a more masculine card. But this really appealed to me because it sort of has like a New Year's Eve kind of vibe, so I was really digging it. To start off, you'll need a piece of black cardstock sized to about A6 and two circle dies that are slightly similar in size. And if you have a nesting circles die set, you can use that. I ended up using the Apple Blossom Spinner and Sliders circle, so the circle that comes in that set, and then a circle from the Creative Nestings circle set. So for this Sorry, for the first circle, you wanna die cut the smaller circle on the front of your card and then die cut a bigger circle from any colored card. I ended up choosing a teal color so that you could clearly see what's going on behind my card and that teal circle will be on the back of my card and I'm gonna attach my champagne bottle to this with some foam tape and that's gonna create the kinetic portion of our card. Next, I'm gonna die cut my bottle from some green cardstock and my champagne flutes out of some silver foil card. And on camera, the silver, sorry about that, it really comes out across as rainbowy, but in real life, it's mostly silver. I wanted to make my bottle look a little bit more realistic, so I'm die cutting a piece of it from some green foiled card and then snipping the label portion off and then I'm gonna take that little piece and glue that to my bottle. Now this next part is probably my favorite part of the whole project. I wanted to make a gold wrapping, much like real champagne bottles have, and there's two ways to go about that. The first is to take some cardstock and then back it with a piece of double-sided adhesive, add some crinkled gold foil, and then die cut the bottle, which is what I did here. And the other is to crinkle some gold foil and then add the double-sided adhesive right onto it and then die cut that. So whichever way you prefer, I felt that the latter part, the latter way, sorry, was the more realistic, gave it the more realistic look, but I felt that it was just more practical to do it the way that I'm showing on camera. And you can also use various foils too. So you could go for a silver seal or even a green kind of seal, which I think would be really cute. And I love that you can really personalize these dyes and truly make them their like your own, sorry. They're so fun to work with. And I mean, if you wanted to convert this bottle into a wine bottle, it comes with a cork dye. And you could even die cut that cork dye with some cork paper and make it really realistic. I mean, how cute would that be? These dies are very snippable, so again, they're really easy to personalize because of that, like I'm doing here, and they're just so versatile too. So now that I'm done with die cutting, I'm gonna go back and emboss my black card with this gorgeous embossing folder that has some super fun sentiments throughout it. And I also have a quick tutorial on how to pair some heat embossing with dry embossing, which would have been really fun to incorporate in this video, but I'm just doing dry embossing here to add some playful but quick texture to my background. 
Again, I wanted my bottle to look realistic and detailed. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be stamping the label and pairing it with a sentiment. But I wanted the label and the sentiment to be two different colors. So first I'll be doing some white embossing and then some gold embossing. And if you've never done heat embossing before, my advice is to just try it. It's really intimidating at first, I'm not gonna lie, but after the first two times or so, it's really fun and you can do so much with it because not only can you heat emboss with stamps, but you can also do it with embossing folders and even with stencils. And it's a great way to add some fancy detail to your projects. You can get really creative with these stamps, especially when you pair them with heat embossing because there are so many different kinds of, um, sorry, different colors of embossing powder to pick from and to try. If you have a moment, I would love to know if you enjoy heat embossing. What are your thoughts on it? Have you tried it? Are you a pro? Let me know, I love learning about you. I'm done with my heat embossing, so now I'm gonna grab a, a strip of white card and I'm gonna stamp my sentiment with some black ink. And then after that, I'm gonna jump into gluing all of my little bits and pieces down on my card front with some foam tape and also some sticks to tape adhesive. I think the most difficult part of this card is attaching the kinetic champagne bottle, but it's not too hard with some patience and you'll definitely need to use some foam tape adhesive. And what I'm doing is I'm doubling it up to make an extra thick layer of tape because it just gives my bottle better movement. So make sure that you're using some thick foam tape if you have it, or if you have like the thin foam tape that you can always double it up or even triple it up if you need to. And also make sure that the bigger circle is in the back so that your bottle doesn't fall off. It needs that bigger circle in the back of your card so that you can keep the bottle in place and it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't budge. And also don't forget that you can apply this technique to your other dyes in the collection. So this would be great with the beer bottle, but for Valentine's Day, you could even do like a cute little flirty spin the bottle card, which I think would be extra cute. I'm gonna be mounting my card front to a black glitter card mat, but before I do that, I wanted to tie some gray ribbon around my card and tie a bow at the front. I just think it's so cute to add a little bit of ribbon to my card. <laughs> and also, when I mount my card front to the glitter card, notice that I'm putting my foam adhesive around the kinetic circle. The foam tape gives my card some height so that my circle isn't hindered from spinning, but also I'm placing the foam tape around the circle and making sure that none of the foam tape touches the circle so that again it's not hindered and allows my bottle on the front to have some motion. To finish up my card I wanted to add some more sparkle to it so I'm doing that by adding some clear self-adhesive gemstones to the champagne flutes and I'm done with my card. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jeanette Lane at CraftStash and don't forget that everything I use to make my card is available at craftstash.co.uk where you will find heaps and heaps of inspiration and how-tos. See you next time. Bye.